Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. It is Thursday, the 8th of December, currently 9.05 a.m. Brisbane time. So the markets have just opened. I wasn't planning on doing a video today. However, Air New Zealand and Downer decided to release some news uh, this morning. So I've decided to do an ad hoc video on the release of these two announcements. One positive, one negative. And I haven't looked at the market reaction yet, but typically the market punishes bad news a little bit more severely than the market rewards the release of good news from a company. And we'll see if that holds true today for these two companies. So right now, the six minutes, they're still the opening. I don't know if everyone knows this, but all companies don't open. They're trading at the same time every day. They all close at exactly the same time. And then there's a closing auction. But it's uh, opened in stages. And it all starts off with uh, those companies with a name or a ticket code at the start of the alphabet. And those companies with a ticket code towards the end of the alphabet, like Z, I'm trying to think of uh, uh, Zimplatz, Z-I-M. There's a few other companies with a ticket code Z. They are uh, open towards the end of the first 10 minutes. It is uh, not always at the same time. Um, so sometimes it might be 9.08 a.m. that those companies with a decode Z open their trading, maybe at 9.09 a.m., something like that. Anyway, so current time, 9.07. So most companies would be open their trading yet. So I'll just show you Zim, Zimplatz. Yep, so they haven't opened their trading yet. So indicative price or indicative price uh, down one cent or 0 0.4 cents. So they haven't opened. They should be opening soon. But if you go to a company like a Air New Zealand, they've already started trading and they're up 3.47% because they have released some good news. But let's go to the news flow today. So if you don't know, I use Comsec. Uh, I don't trade through Comsec, but I use Comsec for other things including the release of information and news. And I get this through the tools tab, go to company announcements. Because the last company I looked at was BHP, it did bring, well, actually they've changed this. So it used to bring up only BHP um, news flow, but now it's bringing up all the uh, ASX announcements that have been released today, market sensitive and non-market sensitive. I don't really care about non-market sensitive news uh, releases, for instance, um, Tombola Gold, TBA have released uh, an announcement in regards to the application for quotation of securities. I don't care about that. Uh, Forbidden Foods, Foods have released an investor presentation and a rights issue and placement options and prospectus. So I might be interested in that just because um, it's a presentation and they've gone through a couple raising. Anyway, so you can filter this market sensitive. I just want to know the market sensitive news today. And one of the first um, interesting news announcements today or releases today was Air New Zealand, which is not a surprise because New Zealand is a little bit ahead of us. And you typically will see New Zealand based companies release their news a little bit earlier than Australian based companies. So Air New Zealand released this particular positive news at 7.31 a.m. just after Fonterra Shareholders Fund. And this particular news from Air New Zealand is positive. And you can just see that, that it is positive just from the title, Air New Zealand Updates Half-Year Earnings Guidance for Financial Year 23. Although you can't really say it's positive just from the title, but I knew it was going to be positive. Uh, there's a lot of positive tailwinds behind uh, airline companies right now. Qantas released a positive news um, announcement a few weeks ago. So Air New Zealand updates half-year guidance for financial year 23. And straight away, you know it's going to be good because the first line here is all about strong travel demand across domestic and international networks, as, as well as a recent decline in jet fuel prices has accelerated the airline's financial recovery. So they've updated their earnings before significant items and taxation, a fairly big update. And this is only for the first half of the year. So they now expect that to be between 395 and 325 million. Previously, 
on the 21st of September, the last guidance, it was expected to be between 200 million and 275 million. So this was or is a significant upgrade in their guidance. And even though this is an upgrade, uh, they have not released any four-year guidance of at this time because of all the factors going on in the world. For instance, they've mentioned here ongoing fuel price volatility, global recessionary risk, continued inflationary pressures, and increased cost. Now, one assumptions they have made in regard to jet fuel price is they're assuming jet fuel prices will be around about one hundred twenty-seven dollars US. Right now, it's at $102, um, approximately that. So if fuel prices keep on dropping, there is a good chance that Air New Zealand will release further profit upgrades. And that's why Air New Zealand right now is in an upgrade cycle, just like Qantas is. Now, I won't go through all these. So I'm, what I'm typically looking for in announcements are profit upgrades or any sort of positive or negative news that can really influence the share price of a company. And the only other one I saw today that was not a mining company, so I'm not really looking at mining companies release, was Downer. So Downer released their announcement at 9.04 a.m. And this was accounting irregularities in utilities and trading update. Those first two words, accounting irregularities, will spook the market. The market doesn't want to see anything to do or have anything to do with encountering irregularities. And the company also issued a trading update. Whether the trading update is going to be positive or negative, let's have a look. All right. So accounting regularities, I haven't really gone into this at all, but the trading update said expected 10 to 20% growth in underlying financial year 23 NPATA, assuming no material COVID-19, weather, labor shortages, or other disruption so just based off that maybe that's pretty good a trading update so no sort of and they also expect underlying financial year 23 and pata to be between 210 and 230 million but no real upgrade or downgrade from previous announcements although i don't follow it down all that closely but the market is going to react to that accounting irregularities let's just have a look at this Downer has identified certain accounting irregularities in its Australian utilities business involving historical misreporting of revenue and work in progress in one of Downer's maintenance contracts. Based on information currently available, the irregularities are estimated to result in historical overstatement of pre-tax earnings in the order of 30 to 40 million at the end of November 2022, accumulated across four financial years. 2020 to 2023, any potential ongoing impact on earnings is still being determined. So I haven't looked at to see how the market is reacted to this news. I would say the market has punished down arm just based off the accounting regularities. Trading update might influence the share price a little bit to the upside or downside. I don't know because I'm not sure what the market was expecting in regards to down results. So let's have a look at how the company has been trading. Now, I've got a trading view here. Now, trading view is about 20 minutes behind the ASX. So there is a lag here. So we'll go to, first we'll look at Australia, not Australia, sorry. Uh, um, what is it, AIZ? I'm sorry, Air New Zealand Limited, by calling you Australia. Anyway. So this is Air New Zealand's chart going back to April 2021. So let's just zoom on here. And the share price reached a low in June of this year of 50 cents. And that was an historical low because I put a line there from the COVID-19 lows and it reached those lows back in June. I don't know why the market was so negative about this company back in June, but we have seen the share price recover. In fact, the share price has increased by about 50% since then. And the share price had moved into an uptrend, nice developing uptrend. And the market is expecting some, was well, probably the best way to say it, the market was expecting some good news from this company. That's why the share price kept on rising. The share price did pause and has pulled back a little bit over the past few weeks. But I do expect the share price to get above 75 cents, which was the highs we saw at the start of November, which would confirm the share price of this company is still in an uptrend. Now, because 
trading view is a little bit behind and because it is still 9.15, let's go to, let's go to Comsec just to see how Air New Zealand is trading now. And it's up 3.75%, 74 seven cents. Her high is 75 cents. So it's struggling to get above that 75 cents a high we saw back in early November. I think if it does get above 75 cents on strength, that would be good news moving forward for New Air New Zealand. And for full disclosure purposes, I am a shareholder of Air New Zealand. I don't intend to be a long-term shareholder of this company. I wouldn't call airlines high quality companies. They are low quality companies. They are capital intensive companies. And I think your only time to own airlines is for the short to medium term to take advantage of positive sentiment in the sector. And that's exactly what's happening with Air New Zealand. So let's have a look at Downer. Actually, before we have a look at Downer, let's go back to the chart just to see Downer's historical chart. There's no reason to have been owning Downer because Downer share price has been in a downtrend since September last year. And the share price reached a high of $6.80. And we can see the highs. You can see the share price just going down in wave. So it's a nice wave. You see these highs and these lows. So the share prices of companies don't move in straight lines. Um, they go in waves. Um, and these are just short-term sentiment swings in the share price. This is just short-term traders. But the main thing here is each successive high has been lower than the previous one. And each successive low has been lower than the previous one, except the one in June, which wasn't quite as, as low as the low or the previous low back in March. And because each low and each high is lower than the previous one, that is the definition of a downtrend. And just because the share price had bounced from about $4.30 up to $5.20 in the recent rise doesn't mean the share price is in an uptrend. We need confirmation and confirmation would be an end to this particular downtrend. So yesterday, which was the 7th of December, share price of Downer closed at $4.80. So let's have a look to see how Downer has been trading today. The overall market right now is down about 0.2%. No surprise there. And yet the, the market has completely punished Downer. Not a surprise here, down 24.4%, uh, down to $3.63. Now, if I wait about five minutes, which I don't really want to do, we can actually see where... Downer is on this trading view chart. The reason I want to see that is the lows back in COVID-19 financial panic were significantly higher or significantly lower than they are now. In fact, it was $2.60. So the share price even now at $3.63 is still well above those COVID-19 lows. So at this point in time, this is bad news uh, that the that Downer has released, accounting irregularities. You don't see this often reported by companies. And I would probably expect the CFO to resign or be fired over this. So I, I think that's a, probably a pretty good bet moving forward for Downer. So hopefully you're not a shareholder of this company. And to be honest with you, there was actually no reason to be owning this company simply because the share price was in a downtrend. Uh, I am more interested in what's happening with Air New Zealand. I just want Air New Zealand to get above 75 cents and stay above 75 cents. Let's just, let's, Let's finish this just to see if there's been any, any impact on Qantas. No, no impact on Qantas. And let's just have a look at Qantas chart. I do actually prefer Air New Zealand over Qantas. So Qantas did break out of a trading range uh, in the last, uh, we'll say last month and a half. And Qantas share price is also in an uptrend. Last time share price was this high at around about $6.20, $6.30, was way back in uh, well, just prior to the COVID-19 financial panic. So Qantas share price is at long-term highs. And Air New Zealand, if it does get above 75 cents, would not be at long-term highs. So you can just see way more positive sentiment right now in Qantas than Air New Zealand. I wouldn't say that Qantas is a high-quality company there in Air New Zealand. I actually do prefer Air New Zealand. I do think there's more value in Air New Zealand right now than there is in Qantas. A lot more further to run for this company at this point in time. That's just my opinion. I've done a little bit of research comparing the two companies and I probably would prefer in New Zealand. And that's why I have taken a short-term position in New Zealand. And we're now 20 minutes after opening and in New Zealand shares 
or candlestick is coming in and it's right again on that previous high we saw start of November. So if we see the share price going towards 80 cents, that would be absolutely ideal for this company. So that's all I've got for today's video. If you do have any questions about this video, if you do like me or this video and you would like me to doing uh, me doing more of these type of videos, just ad hoc looking at announcements released uh, before trading has begun, um, then just leave though your thoughts in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. I totally forgot to put on the light, so I'm a little bit dark there. I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.